Hello everyone and welcome to Game 4 of the World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnishi and Ding Liren. In the first three games you've seen what happened. In Game 1, Nepo had a pretty good game but in the end it ended in a draw. Game 2 ended by Ding losing and Nepo took an early lead in the match. And in Game 3, uh, it's like uh, Ding came back a new person. Uh, he played a very nice game. He had some chances, not winning chances, but they were chances that could potentially lead to positions that could be considered, you know, something that you would play for a win. Uh, in the end, they... Uh, 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 repeated moves and the position ended in a draw but now we are in game four uh, the game is uh, really beautiful you guys will enjoy it so let's check it out but before that we have a nice photo of the handshake before the game there you have it um, uh, Nepo shaking a ding's hand he's like uh, put it there little dude uh, I'm leading the match and I'm looking very much forward to my world chess championship belt and here we have a very nice photo of the first move being made by Mike Klein also known as chess Mike uh, you can see that the players are having a very good laugh as Mike uh, played pawn to b3 uh, but uh, Ding did not go for pawn to b3 so that being said let's check it out the Ding has the white pieces and now he opens with pawn to c4 so not pawn to e4 not pawn to d4 but pawn to c4 uh, let's see what uh, Ding and uh, Rapport um, uh, came up with for game 4 with the white pieces knight to f6 we have knight to c3 e5 by Nepo knight to f3 and knight to c6 the four knights of the English are on the board we have e3 and bishop to b4 so nothing new here uh, queen to c2 and now bishop captures on c3 and now the standard way of replying is queen captures on c3 in order not to mess up your pawn structure uh, but here we have b captures on c3 uh, pawn to d6 and now pawn to e4 preparing to grab the full center with pawn to d4 and the queen from c2 nicely guarding that e4 pawn we have castles by nepo bishop to e2 and now knight to h5 preparing to put the knight on f4 we have pawn to d4 by ding and now uh, the immediate knight to f4 by nepo also very interesting is just queen to f6 it looks weird because you kind of run into bishop to g5 uh, but it doesn't do all that much for white uh, you can just play queen to g6 and uh, it's it's a good position for black so uh, basically after queen to f6 you have to play something like g3 in order to prevent knight to f4 but then you go back and then maybe f5 later on uh, it's a very interesting position. Uh, but Nepo went for knight to f4 right away, and the ding just captured. Bishop captures on f4. We have e captures on f4. And the interesting thing is that uh, this is a position that the ding's second Richard Rapport already had 10 years ago in 2013. He had it against uh, Ilya uh, Zargatsky in Bundesliga. And he won a very nice game. But in that game, the game continued pawn to h4. And uh, you could um, uh, do a lot of damage with this pawn to h4 move. Let's say black continues developing. You play pawn to h5, bishop to g4, uh, even pawn to h6. And this is something that definitely uh, resembles a style that you would expect from uh, Richard Rapport. Let's say g6, knight to d2. And even if bishop captures, you're going to boldly go into the center with your king. Let's say queen to e7. And you would get some uh, weird position like this. But okay. Uh, if you if you enjoyed, you can play it. Uh, after he captures an f4, Ding just castled king side. So uh, Rapport and Ding prepared something else, um, uh, deviating from that game. Uh, queen to f6 by Nepo and now rook f to e1. We have rook to e8 and now bishop to d3. And everyone was very sp uh, skeptical of this bishop to d3 move by Ding as it sort of really invites bishop to g3 and solves all of Nepo's developing problems. Um, more, more likely something that rook a to b1 can be, play can be played which hinders the development of the light square bishop. But still after rook a to b1 and b6 you're still gonna play rook a to d1. So maybe it's just better to play rook a to d1 right away and now you might consider something like queen to g6 going after the e4 pawn and now the reason why it wasn't played uh, is probably because you have to play a silly move like queen to c1 and if you don't have this prepared uh, chances are you're not going to find this at the board now the e4 pawn is defended with a tactic of course uh, queen captures is impossible because bishop d3 just traps the black queen and rook captures on e4 is impossible because of queen to b1 and look at this now pretty silly stuff and now uh, once you play a move let's say something like bishop to g4 uh, you're gonna uh, see knight to h4 attacking the queen guarding the f5 square and you don't have a way to defend the, the rook here because if you move just pawn to d5 and uh, you just um, get destroyed so you can't play bishop g4 you're gonna have to play something like pawn to f5 but already it's a very very weird position to play like
like bishop to d3, you're going to trade here, captures, captures, and this just looks weird. Uh, so, you know, many, many tricks and uh, funny moves in the position, but okay, Dean goes for bishop to d3, obviously, it goes uh, within the theme of something he and Rapport discussed. Uh, bishop to g4, Nepo played this fairly instantly, and now knight to d2, of course, you're not going to allow captures, and now comes knight to a5 by Nepo. Nepo really likes to put his knights on the, uh, on the rim. Uh, the the other moves that could be considered here are pawn to f3. Like it, it really looks like a good move uh, because it kind of ruins white's pawn structure. The problem is that both the g3 and h3 are perfectly fine for white. Like if h3, uh, black will play bishop captures on h3 in, in hopes of checkmating the white king, but you're just going to play knight captures on f3. And after the bishop goes back, you're just going to play rook to e3, defend the knight, you're going to double up on the e-file, and you're going to have a, a, a great game. Uh, on the other hand, you might also consider rook a to d8 now. It's a, it, it's a move like any other, you just bring the rook into the game, let's say pawn to h3, bishop back to d7, and now rook a to d1, and the game continues, something like b6, let's say knight to f3, and now Nepo could even consider ideas like pawn to g5, pawn to h5, pawn to g4, if he wishes to play a game like that, but as the game progresses, uh, you will see that uh, this is not the kind of game that he wants to play. We have knight to a5, and now uh, pawn to c5 by Ding. The immediate pawn to c4. Now, uh, just to uh, give you an idea of what also could have been played, uh, queen to a4 is a really nasty idea by white because it puts pressure on the knight and also takes away the d7 square from the black bishop. And now if b6 defending the knight, now f3 uh, is a little bit different. Now you don't have bishop to d7, the queen covers that square, so the bishop has to go back. Now knight to b3 attacks the knight and you don't really have... Um, uh, good squares uh, squares for the knight. If you go something like knight to b7, then e5 attacks the queen followed by bishop to e4. Uh, you run into some serious trouble here. You're going to have to trade here and you get the nice semi-open file for your, for your rook. Uh, on the a-file, you can double up on the a-file. Uh, it looks to be very promising for white. But okay, again, Ding has a different plan. He plays pawn to c5, and now d captures on c5 by Nepo. Uh, it's, uh, you know that Ding will not capture back with the d captures on c5, so obviously c5 is a pawn sacrifice by Ding, uh, and Nepo accepts it. d captures on c5, and it's objectively the best move. Uh, pawn to e5 attacks the queen, queen to h6, and now pawn to d5. Ding gets the massive center here. Rook a to d8 and now pawn to c4, just defending his center. We have b6 by Nepo and now pawn to h3. Chasing away the bishop, you knew that this move was coming sooner or later, bishop to h3. And now how can Dink continue this position? It's uh, not easy to figure out uh, a, a, a way to do this. It's a very, very, uh, well, it, it's just very hard to find a way to improve. You already have the strong center. Your queen and bishop are already controlling this beautiful diagonal. Okay, you can put the knight on f3 or to e4 and you have to decide where the rook on a1 is going probably to d1 or you would be also very happy if you could double up on the e file uh, but how to connect all of those ideas uh, here ding finds bishop to e4 and it's a very nice move uh, also th this is defended by a tactic if you capture just bishop captures on h7 check wins that rook so rook to e7 by nepo and now queen to c3 queen to c3 uh you, you'll see a, a very fine move uh we have rook d to e8 nepo double up on the d file the situation on the clock if you guys are interested is 55 minutes um, uh, for for ding and 41 minutes for nepo uh, and here we have bishop to f3 and this is a, a really awesome move because ding really has to choose between bishop to f3 and something like uh, bishop to c2 to a4 because the bishop needs to go to this diagonal now, if you go bishop to c2 right away, let's say queen to g5, you're going to play bishop to a4, you're going to attack the rook, let's say pawn to c6, uh, you get a very, very complicated position. D captures on c6, now queen to g6, ready to capture back, uh, but now c7 attacks the rook uh, by the bishop on a4, rook to f8, and now even pawn to e6 in order to save the c7 pawn. F captures on e6, and now queen to e5, defending the pawn here, for example, pawn to h6, preparing queen to g5, and now rook a to c1. We have queen to g5, 
queen to d6 defending and now even pawn to f3 and this is a position I think no one can calculate and probably why Ding gave up uh, on the whole idea because I mean look at this it's just one big mess. So instead after this rook d to e8 Ding went for bishop to f3 uh, he still has the option of going bishop to d1 to a4 but he's asking Nepo if he's maybe interested in trading and then Ding gets to get his knight to a, uh, to a better square. Uh, but Nepo just plays knight back to b7 he doesn't even bother capturing or playing bishop to g6 uh, and now we have rook to e2 ding now ready to double up on the e file and although the knight is kind of back in the game it's hard to say where the knight is really going uh, uh, he will uh, probably uh, f6 is coming at some point and then and ding will have to push e6 if he doesn't want to mess up his pawn structure in the center and then nepo will get the d6 square for his knight is the most likely idea and that's exactly what happens here you could also consider capturing but first we have f6 and now how do you continue here. Uh, basically Ding has to decide whether he wants to push e6 or he wants to play uh, uh, something else like rook a to e1. You could also consider doubling up on the e file but other than e6 uh, there's really nothing. If you consider doubling up here let's say f captures on e5, rook captures on e5 after queen f6 you can just resign with white. How do you how do you deal with this? Uh, you can't even give up the two rooks for the queen because the rook on e8 is defended. It's just queen captures and now this is pointless. So uh, e6 basically the only move for ding, pawn to e6 and now comes knight to d6 by Nepo. Uh, also you could consider bishop captures on f3. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very tricky move but if you didn't play it on the previous move now it really doesn't make sense for you to play it because if you played it on the previous move when the pawn was still on e5 queen captures on e5 would have been impossible as the queen also was uh, guarding the pawn here but now uh, both queen captures and knight captures is possible so if you really wanted to capture probably on the previous move it would have been better so knight to d6 by nepo and now rook a to e1 by ding ding just doubles up on the e file we have knight to f5 a beautiful square for nepo's knight and now uh, bishop captures on h5 uh, by ding. Bishop captures on g4 also an incredibly tricky move. Uh, the problem is um, uh, how do you deal with this? If you go knight to d4 then rook to e4 and if bishop to g6 then just rook captures on d4. You're gonna give up the rook for the exchange here. Captures captures and the white has a spectacular pawn structure here. The very strong bishop. The knight that's able to go uh, you know something like b1 c3 b5 then put pressure on uh, black's entire position. So it would be very very hard to play against this setup. Uh, but ding actually plays bishop captures on h5, queen captures on h5 and now rook to e4. Ding now forces Nepo to deal with the uh, with the doubled pawn on f4 and uh, Nepo just defends it. Pawn, uh, queen to h6 and now we have queen to f3 and here something unimaginable happened. Now the f4 pawn is attacked twice and everyone thought all right since Nepo pretty much played this entire game setting up everything to be uh, able to push this pawn to g5 Pawn to g5 is probably coming now and after that something like let's say g4 and only then after g4 is played the knight will go to d6, kick back the rook, rook goes back to e2, something like queen to g6 and Nepo has um, a very nice play here. He has h5 whenever he wants, he has f5 whenever he wants, the knight is controlling c4 so you can't really move the knight from d2. Uh, I mean it's a, it's a fine position. Okay, uh, blacks, uh, rooks aren't really doing all that much but you can't really do much with those pawns uh, you know, either way. Uh, but instead, after queen to f3, Nepo did not play pawn to g5. It seems like g5 was never on his mind because he just played knight to d4 and that can only mean one thing. He never even considered uh, the move that Ding played on the next move. So feel free to pause the video for those of you who haven't seen the game live uh, and find the absolute best move for Ding while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, in incredible positional uh, idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook Captures on D4. Uh, that's the move that Ding played and now Nepo is in big trouble. Now of course you're, you're probably wondering what happens if Queen captures. That's probably what Nepo th uh, th uh, saw when he played Knight to D4. He saw that this is not a problem in any way because he's just gonna trade and play C6 
and that's it. Pretty much ruin uh, ruin his pawn structure. Let's say knight f3, knight captures rook, captures c, captures on d5, c captures rook to d8, and stop those pawns. Because if you um, uh, remember, uh, black was up a pawn, and if rook d1, you're just gonna block those pawns. Uh, rook to d6, or even better, uh, if rook to d3, then rook to d6, and the pawns have been blockaded. Now it's uh, I mean it's it, it's a dead draw. If anything, it will be black who will be able to undermine them and maybe get some sort of an edge. So that was Nepo's idea. But after knight to d4, Ding played the move you all found, rook captures on d4, and now look at this, c captures on d4, and now knight to b3, this is the star move, not the rook captures on d4-1, knight to b3 is the star move, because now you see knight captures on d4 is coming, and then the knight has access to c6 and to the f5 squares. And now there is no way to play this, d3 seems like uh, the, the move you want to play because of sort of um, uh, defense against knight captures on d4 and forces the white queen to move from such an active square then maybe you find some counterplay with pawn to f3 but i don't think nepo was in the mindset to look for such ideas after he blundered this he just played pawn to g5 now and now knight captures on d4 we have queen to g6 and now ding just plays pawn to g4 and uh uh, uh, when Ding was sacrificing the rook, uh, sacrificing the exchange on d4, his hand, his hand was shaking, and uh, he, he almost uh, <laughs> dropped the rook when he was uh, about to sacrifice it. But when he pushed g4 here, he was, it, it was like he was, uh, you know, it, it was like he was creating a, a, an earthquake. He, he just played it so firmly, uh, he knew that he was completely winning here. So he played g4, uh, now the knight is coming to f5. Once the knight lands, it's game over. The rooks and the queen have no moves for the rest of the game, so Nepo is forced to play uh, f captures on g3 al passant f captures we have pawn to h5 now but it doesn't matter just knight to f5 attacks the rook here rook to h7 and now queen to e4 with some nasty threats of knight to e7 check winning the black queen here so king to h8 sidestepping check and now pawn to e7 and uh uh, Nepo uh, kind of gave Ding uh, a, a look here when this pawn to e7 move was played because Ding played it instantly and Nepo thought, okay, aren't you going to maybe uh, think a little bit more about the position? But it is the strongest move recommended by the engine and it really uh, limits uh, the mobility of Black's pieces even more. Uh, Black's only counterplay with the queen was something like queen to g8 to f8, but now even that is impossible due to the e7 pawn here. So here, uh, you could play g4, but then h4, this doesn't really change anything. So king uh, queen to f7 was played in order to stop queen to e6, uh, but now Ding just plays pawn to d6. It, it is uh, absolutely sufficient. C captures, knight captures, now forks the queen and the rook. We have queen to g8, knight captures, queen captures, and now just queen to e6. Going after the f6 pawn, so king to g7, defending it, and now rook to f1. And this is a fine way to... Uh, to uh, bring the game to its end, uh, forcing rook to h6 and only now rook to d1, preparing rook to d8. Uh, we have f5 now attacking Ding's queen here, but queen to f5 with check. King to f7, now Nepo's only plan is for Ding to... Uh, not blunder one move, probably not even blunder two moves. Ding would have to blunder three moves in a row in order to lose this. It would be... Uh, it would be uh, un unimaginable for this to happen. But okay, queen captures on f5 with check. We have rook to f6 and now queen to h7 with check. King to e6 and now queen to g7. And that's uh, pretty much all there is. There's no move for black here. The Nepo played rook to g6, but now queen to f8. Uh, and he was in this position on move 47 that uh, Jan Nepomnishi resigned the game. And Ding Liren is back in the match. So both players um, uh, win their games uh, uh, before a rest today. And now uh, Ding is going very happy into a rest day and Nepo is going I, I imagine very sad into a rest day uh, I, um, I I still haven't uh, uh, watched the press conference I, I will after I make the, make the video but I'm sure uh, he was very very sad about uh, everything that happened here uh, either way, uh, game uh, 2 and 4, uh, the, the ones where we've had this uh, really awesome surprise by uh, Ding second Richard Rapport uh, in, uh, you know, in, the, in the opening part of the, of the game uh, was very impressive and I hope we continue seeing this and it will be very interesting to see how Nepo uh, deals with it. The, the Ponte H3 surprise didn't go so well for Ding, uh, but this one uh, went very, very well. Uh, but it, you know, even if uh, everything was looking perfectly fine, but Nepo just uh, completely blundered the game away. Uh, so here, problem is after rook to g8, uh, you're just going to play rook to d8 and that's it. 
and you're gonna be up to much material let's say rook captures he captures uh, brings a queen into the game captures captures uh you're gonna be up a full rook so that's why of course here you resign uh but yeah it, it all came down to this point and it, it wasn't the perfect game by either of them uh, you know uh maybe maybe more optimal moves could have been made but it's very hard to say i mean you ask this engine this move is more optimal you ask this engine this move is more optimal so they they both played pretty much uh, a, a great game up until this point but here uh, Nepo's knight to d4 just uh, it's like he it's like he didn't even uh, consider rook captures on d4 a possibility because he, he, if you put yourself now in this position and you uh, and you consider this captures and captures even if you don't find knight to b3 right away how are you ever getting those rooks into the game i mean it's um uh, even if you just give this knight uh, uh 50 moves there there's pretty much nothing black can do here the knight will find its way to five to c6 i mean the black's position will just shatter so uh very weird for nepo uh it's uh uh, sort of like uh, like maybe against Magnus after game six where he just uh, started playing poorly but here th there was no breaking point for him or anything he just uh, made a, a terrible blunder for, for no particular reason and it will be very interesting to see if this is something that will uh, be reoccurring throughout uh, the, the rest of the World Chess Championship match but okay it's still early only game four has finished uh, we'll see what happens in the uh, you know uh, uh, game five and so on and so on uh, so yeah that's the game I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank Yaroslav Simbida, Matthew Benoit, JB, Christian Janot, and James Cashman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the World Chess Championship until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.